a referendum, I think, a year ago, that then he presented for the second time and he wanted to change the Constitution, allowing him to uh, seek re-election uh, for indefinite uh, number of periods. So uh, that, that, I think, That is sounds like Mike Bloomberg in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it turns out uh, that Latin American influence uh, cuts both <laughs> ways, right? <laughs> but um, uh, in, in the case of Ecuador, it's exactly the same in the case of Bolivia. So the political class that had to undertake the reforms, uh, helping our countries get out of the debt crisis, uh, uh, had to pay the price of, of the lack of, of deliverables to the wider population and the wider vo voting population. And, and then uh, these independent forces came and took over the political process, and now uh, we, are, we are seeing the consequences. But then you have the example of, of Brazil. In Brazil, clearly, we have a center-left government that hasn't uh, taken exactly the same route that uh, other uh, South, South American countries have taken. And President Lula will end his second and final term. He will not seek re-election. Uh, with a higher level of popularity than when he became president the first time around. Uh, and that proves that uh, the center left uh, is not a uniform uh, uh, phenomenon in Latin America. Uh, I, I think uh, the, the example of President Lula and the example of President Bachelet in Chile is probably also the same type, uh, illustrates that uh, in Latin America you can find center left governments that actually respond effectively to the challenges of the world economy. Brazil has become a major superpower trade in, in, in trade terms, in financial terms. Uh, Chile has continued growing and continued uh, uh, creating a society that is where inequality is virtually disappearing because of, of the very effective implementation of uh, policies of social cohesion uh, without uh, uh, going into uh, the other type of policies that you see in Venezuela uh, with uh, a more or less updated uh, application of certain Cuban policies, uh, uh, including uh, mechanisms for social control in, in, the, in the neighborhoods, uh, committees for the defense of the government, and this type of, of mechanisms uh, that uh, you saw in Cuba, you are now seeing in Venezuela, but that definitely you didn't see in, or will never see probably in Brazil or, or in Chile. Uh Talking of uh, the concept of center-left, uh, the United States is going through a period of readjustment. And uh, it can be classified as an attempt to bring in center-left policies in the United States also. Though I'm, we are not sure as to whether they'll be successful or not. And yesterday's elections show that there is a reaction to center-left concepts. But what is the relationship between the Dominican Republic and the United States, other than baseball and immigration? Well, those are two major elements, so what's left? Uh, we, we have a lot uh, in common. We, we have uh, very, very close and tight bonds uh, in terms of trade. Um, the United States is still by far our largest trading partner. Well, what do you sell? We sell, uh, well, from, uh, from the cigars you can buy in the corner shop. Uh, we in the, the Dominican Republic is the top exporter of cigars. The Cuban cigars are the most famous, but uh, it turns out the Cubans eliminated all the varieties of cigars, and they have been very successful in marketing one variety of cigar. It's very good, but it's only one variety. In the Dominican Republic, we still keep the biodiversity that the Tainos left us, and you can find about 76 types of tobacco in the Dominican Republic, so uh, I'm not promoting smoking. I don't smoke. I'm asthmatic. I'm allergic. <laughs> uh, but the fact is that uh, we export 54% of the cigars uh, that are traded in the world, mm -hmm. and those are grown mostly in the Cibao Valley area in the north of the Dominican Republic. Uh, we export um, all sorts of manufactured goods from export processing zones, uh, from uh, uh, Pants, shirts, coats, uh, suits. Uh, just uh, last weekend, I was in one of the shopping centers uh, that are very close to this university. And most of the things I bought were made in the Dominican Republic in the export processing zones. And, and the top brands are, are still manufacturing in the Dominican Republic. 
Uh, that, I think, uh, has been severely affected by the relationship the United States has developed so uh, effectively with China. And in spite of the fact that we have a dear CAFTA, China, the onslaught of China has hit us very, very hard. We have lost at least 40,000 jobs in the export processing zones because of, of the competition of China. But um, uh, this, start, this is starting to change as a result of our successful negotiations with the European Union. And now we are seeing uh, that uh, jobs are being recovered. Uh, there is a recovery of job creations, in particular in the textiles and apparel sector, because uh, many of the factories that in Europe were lying idle because of lack of, of labor, uh, mostly from, uh, this, this is happening, it's an interesting phenomenon that hasn't really been documented in the press. When Bulgaria and Romania joined the European Union, uh, instead of generating jobs in Bulgaria and Romania, uh, what uh, the, the, the immediate effect of joining into the European Union was for the Bulgarians and the Romanians leave into the rest of the European Union. Of course, the standard of living was higher, the opportunities were greater, but then this left idle a number of factors, including in textiles and apparel. And what are the people doing? They're bringing them to the Dominican Republic. So uh, thanks to the trade agreement we have with them, now we're providing them with their own machines, uh, and the goods uh, that uh, all uh, Bulgaria and Romania were, were providing before. What do we export to the, to the United States? We export many other things, jewelry, electronic products. We export services, uh, such as baseball. But uh, those are, of course, on the basis of migration, permanent migration. But those generate uh, important remittances flows uh, that uh, have a sizable impact, uh, although they are not the majority of the remittances. We, we also export as, as services. Tourism is our number one service export. And uh, the U.S. tourist is a, is a very demanding tourist. Uh, they don't go to the all-inclusive tourist. They go to the highest scale tourist. Uh, Casa de Campo is probably the, 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 the tourist destination of choice for, for the U.S. tourists, where they find six uh, golf courses, uh, the most luxurious villas, um, uh, also a very nice marina for the judge. So we, we, you know, we have a pretty diversified export portfolio that uh, has developed mostly because we have a close relationship with the U.S. And now, of course, we're ready to take on the rest of the world. They had much better schemes to promote productivity and uh, people who achieved the productivity of the day got a flag and got, of course, a, a bonus on top of producing uh, that uh, desired uh, output for the day. And that you never saw in the other type of uh, uh, manufacturing operations in the Dominican Republic. So, so they were separated by a gulf of about 20 years in labor practices and in productivity uh, incentive uh, scheme. And uh, that uh, can only be a positive element uh, in the development of, of the Dominican Republic. The one thing that uh, is negative uh, in our relationship uh, with the United States uh, in, in this particular uh, product, textiles and apparel, is the fact that we are tied to very strict rules of origin that prevent us from using raw materials coming from elsewhere but the United States. We are tied to the fabric produced in North Carolina, for example, but that fabric is more and more scarce because those manufacturers are going out of business. So what can we do? With Europe, those rules of origin are much uh, more liberal. Uh, and therefore, our first um, uh, container with uh, woolen suits uh, to clients in Germany, and the Germans are very, very demanding with their clothing, were manufactured with uh, woolen textiles coming from Pakistan. And that, unfortunately, we still can do uh, with the United States. But the fact that we can do it in Europe, I think, is, is a matter it's a source for hope for both of us, I think. And uh, I hope uh, in the future we will be able to upgrade the Arcafta to uh, be able to do the same. Yeah, he's trying to avoid the last question. <clears throat> Today is a dramatic day in the United Nations because the Goldstone Report is being discussed in the General Assembly and all countries have to take position. What position have you taken on the Goldstone Report? We, we have welcomed the report. We will be joining the resolution uh, that the General Assembly will adopt. Goldstone himself, uh, he's a very learned lawyer and, and judge and very respected in, in South Africa, said in his study that this is a, a basis for the Human Rights Commission 
to uh, undertake its, its work in the promotion and defense.